Welcome back, everyone, to another episode on the Let's Trot Show, where we dive deep into the stories of successful individuals. For today's episode, we've got Cronulla Sharks wrecking ball, Sifa Talakai. Sifa has proved himself to be one of the most damaging ball runners in the game. Today, we'll talk about his journey starting out as a promising junior Kiwi out of the under-20s competition, to then dropping back to Ron Massey Cup for St. Mary's, and then slowly climbing the ranks to cement himself as an NRL player for the Cronulla Sharks. It's a testament to Sifa's determination, and I can't wait to share with you his incredible journey so far. So sit back and enjoy. Why do the boys call you Ninja? <laughs> <laughs> Who gave you that? <laughs> You gave me that. <laughs> I was kind of lost in the mentality that I, you know, I let, I let my father down, I let my my mum down, I let my family down. Because once I got the contract to go to first grade, I ended up becoming the um, the main the main source of income. Speaking of Tonga, like I'm actually surprised you're actually here. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't burning, because you know that's that's all I wanted this year. It was one of my goals to you know, get back into that jersey. Game two, top of the world. Everything went your way. Dream debut. Yeah. Game three, you play against Queensland and you guys get beat. What was the difference? I'd like, say moments. Sifa, what's happening, brother? Thanks for coming on the show. How no, you thank been? you. Thank you for having me. Um, big shout out to Jay. Thanks for getting me How on. How good, and, uh, yeah. Thanks, Jay. Sammy, Sammy as well from Jade Up. Yeah. How oh, good, brother. Looking good on you. Looking good. You at Jade uh, Up quite often? Uh, yeah, you know, the boys, um, the boys have been supporting me throughout the year and you know, what better way to give back than to, you know, give it a bit of a shout give out a on, a, plug. on the podcast. Yeah. Too smart, bro. Too smart. What do you get up to in your spare time? I'm curious. Nah, not much. Um, <laughs> I told you this before, but yeah, just pretty much relaxing, training here and there and just looking after the kids. You got the, the boys in footy yet or? Yeah, I got my oldest in footy. Um, it goes all right. Biggest in the team, but. Loves to run down the sideline a lot. <laughs> yeah, were you the biggest in your team back in the day? No, I wasn't. No. I wasn't actually. Always um, stock, stocky, built to the ground. I wasn't even stocky too. I was a bit skinny, eh? I, I started, I started on the wing. Did you? Um, yeah, yeah like, here we go. I was a bit, yeah, I was a lot slimmer. Um, I did a lot of things. Um, growing up, I played union. Yeah. Uh, done athletics, and then I had that um, the rugby league as well. Played Oztag whenever Oztag was. Um, as well. Yeah, yeah. I've done, yeah, I've done quite a bit. And um, yeah, my dad, my dad used to train me pretty much every day too. So. My dad, but I went through the same thing with my dad. He used to take me to the park and just run me ragged, bro. Yeah. Like, be like, why aren't you doing this stuff? Why am yeah, I yeah. doing this by growing up, Growing up, I didn't understand it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to dread it. I used to hate it. Yeah. Like, um, I used to try and come up with excuses so I didn't have to train. But then, um, yeah, as I grew older and I you know, got the opportunity to play first grade and train and stuff, I, I finally understood, you know, um, yeah, this was what he wanted for, like wanted for myself, and yeah. um, you know, without with everything I have, I owe to him. Like, um, you know, I, I don't shout out my my dad enough. Um, you know, I'm I'm not even half the man he is, but um, he's done a lot for myself and my family, and yeah, I'm here because of him. It's fair to say you obviously got a close relationship with all, with everything you've been through with him. Yeah. Um, what was life gro like growing up? Um, life was, life was good. Um, as a kid, you know, man, I didn't know we struggled. Um, you know, I used to live with, I'm one of six. So I got, oh, wow. I got three sisters and two older brothers and I got my parents, but we, I used to live with my grandparents and my older cousin as well. Yeah. And we used to stay, we live, my parents still live there now. Um, we lived in, uh, how many bedrooms? Uh, yeah, four bedroom house. And we all used to cram into, yeah, I think, yeah, the four rooms. And, um, yeah, we, we struggled a fair bit, but my parents never, my parents never made that a main focus, um, if you get what I'm trying to say. Like, we, we never knew we were struggling at the time. Yeah. We were just happy, you know, being kids and we were just grateful for everything. Um, you yeah, know, we didn't notice we were struggling, but my parents did a good job of hiding that from us, that we were struggling and we still got... Well, we we didn't get everything as 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 kids, but we had what we needed. Yeah, and that that was simply it. I can relate to that. Like yeah. I um, I grew up with mum, grandparents as well at a young age, and you know, like they don't make a tremendous amount of money. You know, my my grandfather was a uh, blue collar, worked in the steelworks, uh, came over to this country, um, had nothing, came by himself, and pretty much raised enough money to buy a house and fly over my six mm. um, uh, aunties and uncles from Portugal, but. 
Yeah, I got a tremendous amount of respect, especially for the old school guys, yeah. our generation. Like we complain sometimes and think that life's hard. And I think like when we have like a bigger perspective and we put, our, put ourselves in our parents' shoes or our grandparents' shoes, yeah. That was tough. Like that life crazy, was yeah. tough back then, man. It's just a bit of perspective, right? Can you imagine getting them on a the podcast and, and them explaining everything? Mate, like I never complain again. Every time I like sometimes I, you know, you have days where like fuck, like I'm I'm tired, I'm this is this is just too hard. But then I don't know. I just sometimes think about like me anyway, I check myself, I think about what my grandfather went through, mm. um, what my mum had to go through, you know, raising me and my two two younger sisters and you know, growing up in housing commission, like being around ice addicts and stuff like that, like yeah. keeps you grounded. I think you know, yeah, definitely keeps, keeps you grounded. Definitely. Um, what did uh, what did your brothers do? Did they play footy as well? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, my older brother did. Yeah. Um, he played. I think he played. Went through development um, yeah. with South Sydney. Um, played our mats, SG ball. But um, yeah, I think he quit because of. Um, his shoulder kept dislocating and he didn't want to get the up mm. and he, yeah, he just gave it up from then. But he also did athletics as well. Um, he done pretty good for himself uh, through that. I think he went to nationals and stuff, represented Australia like jun in the junior nationals and really? stuff as well. Yeah. Um, obviously it wasn't track because Polynesians aren't that <laughs> too fast. It was yeah. more, yeah. Hey, I feel you, bro. <laughs> the Liberties yeah. are the same. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, he did good for himself. My other brother, he's... Um, he was the quickest out of all of us, but he didn't didn't care. He just yeah. didn't do nothing. And you said like your dad used to take you to the park and train you. Like yeah. you said you didn't really like it. Uh, growing up when you started realising you had a gift to play rugby league, was it pure out of, in, out of enjoyment or was it more because you saw it as a living and to kind of put food on the table for your family in the future? Like how did you kind of see it and look yeah. at it? Um, yeah, during – when I was younger, uh, I played it out of enjoyment. Um, and it wasn't too – I'd say even after twenties, like I, I, I didn't really pursue it as a career. as a career yeah. just yet until possibly uh, until I made the junior Kiwis um, yep. a year up, and that's when I yeah that's when I realized well I did realize but I knew I wanted to play um, yeah first grade and I wanted to pursue the career, um, but I didn't really do that too either because I I ended up getting sacked because. Or my my own fault. I was fucking around too much. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just took everything for granted, and I thought I was on top of the road. Yeah, because you say you got sacked. Like yeah. I, I didn't know you got sacked, and I, I feel like we crossed paths at Penrith for for some. I can't remember it. I think you were still in rehab at this time too. Yeah. I, you were was just that, coming back? Was that with my face? Yeah. When I fractured my face. I, I can't, so. I'm not too sure. I can't. Was it 2018? 2018. So it would have yeah. been yeah. That's what that, that that year is when I fractured my face and um. So it was all a bit of a blur then, but yeah, I remember seeing you in the building or, and then training. I was like, yeah. where did you come from? It was like mid-year, right? Yeah, mid-year, yeah. Yeah, so why did you get sacked from Souths and what made you come to Penrith? Um, <clears throat> yeah, at the, uh, I think, yeah, it was early, early 2018 um, and I had a putrid preseason. Um, I had a lot going into, sorry. Yeah. I had, yeah, I had a lot going into the back end of 2017 going into 2018 and <clears throat> just a lot of um, family stuff that um, had happened, yeah, during that off season. And then, um, yeah, going into 2018, I already had, I think, I'm not sure if it was one, I already had a breach notice. Mm. Um, and then the second one came, no, sorry, I had, I had already had two. So I had two breach notices already and then I got my third one in preseason. Um, Cause I was late to Texas scan. Oh, you can't yeah. be doing that, brother. Yeah, you can't during be doing that. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, I had to go through the whole the whole process of um, sitting in front of the board, explaining for being late. Yeah, explaining why they should keep me. And um, that's pretty extreme. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I had to yeah explain, give them reason, and um, you know, try and convince them to allow me to continue um, working with the club and doing uh, training with first grade and, you know, play and stuff as well. And yeah, I think um, at the time I was, you know, thinking that I was a junior that, you know, I'd get a bit of leeway and, you know, hopefully everything will go go good and I'll still be here. And yeah, it didn't end up going 
Um, going the way I thought it was going to go. You must not be a good lawyer. Nah. <laughs> you didn't convince them at yeah. all. <laughs> so, yeah, they yeah gave me the flick. And, yeah. you know, it's not their fault. Um, you know, the majority of the responsibility is on me. Yeah. Um, I took it for granted. And obviously I had to, yeah, get the flick. And I ended up, um, man, I didn't train for like, I'd say two, three months. Packed on all the weight. I was sitting around, just laying around at home. Um and then uh, my manager called me not the yeah, after a couple of months and said he had a gig for me. The one was a Q Cup for Wynnum, um, and the other one was Penrith. And um, but before I made my decision, he wanted me to sit down with uh, Gus, Gus Gould. And um, so we went and had a meeting with Gus. And yeah, you know, the aura of that guy, mm. you know, I knew I I didn't want to go to Wynnum. No offense, but. I didn't want to go there. I wanted to stay, you know, in Close Sydney. To your family as well. Yeah, New South Wales. Stay with my parents. Um, and you know, talking to talking to him, you know, he convinced me. Didn't even take much. Um, you know, just talking to him, just general conversation. You know, I, I knew he's who I wanted to play for. Um, I'm gonna sign with him. Yeah, well. And so yeah, I ended up signing with, um, the Penrith cut on, yeah, for the New South Wales Cup. Yeah. Um. And yeah, the rest is history. And I, I still can't get my head around how you had to front a board because um, you were late to a DEXA scan and you had to plead with them to obviously keep you and put their faith in you. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's a, uh, so extreme. Yeah. I, 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 I appreciate like, you're accountable and you know you put your hand up, you know, you were late. That's that's all that's all well, great. But well, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just because of We've seen players. DEXA scan and stuff. Uh, like, oh, there was a few misdemeanors. Yeah, a few misdemeanors and just shoot training attitude uh, I guess overruled the whole thing mm. and um you know I, I, I don't regret it because you know I wouldn't be who I am now if I didn't go through everything that I've been through yeah so you know they, it is what it is like if that's the way God planned it then uh, yeah it's it like, is what it is it's like we had the almost similar paths me and you like we both started at South playing on the 20s yeah almost reverse I was playing junior kangaroos you obviously junior yeah. kiwis and uh the following year um I was like, I was still diligent with my training, but like, I felt like almost that I lost self belief. Like, I looked, I looked at guys around me, like Sam Burgess, Greg Inglis, John Sutton, um, and I'm like, I just didn't feel like I belonged. Like, I, I felt like um, I didn't deserve to be around these kind of guys. I was, I was pretty starstruck, and um, I guess I just didn't have that much confidence in that in that season. And then. Obviously, South Center want to resign me, and uh, Madge was coming the following year. So thank God I missed one of his preseasons, uh, and I had an offer to go and meet Gus, and went to go upstairs. I met him, and mate, I, I can totally relate what you're saying. Like the first yeah. time I met him, like I was shitting myself. Like oh, it's Gus Gould. Like I can't believe I'm mm. sitting in front of him, and um, all the confidence that I didn't have that that previous to that meeting, prior to that meeting, I like hearing Gus saying, I believe in you. I think you're a special player. I want you to sign here. Like that just elevated me completely. Yeah. And you would have probably had the same exact same, feeling. Same thing. He gave me the best advice. I'd say, um, after the, or during that meeting as well, he, um, he came and told me straight to my face. He said, uh, look, uh, I know you're talented, but, um, I know you don't work hard enough. And you know, that, um, that still stays with me now because it, it challenges it challenges, challenges yeah. myself not just physically but mentally as well and you know if the, if this guy sees it in me then why do why do I not see it in myself mm. like why why am I not being the person he believes that I can be? You said two or three months after Souths you weren't training you were just kind of lounging around like what were you doing to make ends meet because obviously you had to pay the bills. Yeah, um, so at the time I knew. Um, I had this guy that I worked worked for during um, 20s. Yep. We used to unload containers out in Cornell. Okay. So, yeah, I, I contacted him and we kind of, um, yeah, I did that. And I pretty much did that for the majority of the year. And it wasn't until a friend of mine actually contacted me and asked if I wanted to do carbos. Um, and, um, you know, I thought, why not give it a crack? Because I need to lose a bit, a bit of weight if I am to... Mm. You know, um, perform good at, at Penrith. And plus, we always had um, skin folds <laughs> almost every week. Oh, no. So, it was pretty strict out yeah, there, man. Um, I ended up doing that to drop a bit of weight and 
ended up doing so, but then, um, yeah, during that year in Cup, we, we made it to the finals, but we lost. We ended up losing the semi final, and after that, I was, I, I was kind of like, um, I didn't want to run freaking five days a week, yeah, and and go through all that when I have no 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 goal or no motivation behind yeah. it as well. But um, yeah, back to the question. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. But yeah, during that time, like uh, I wasn't really thinking about making ends meet. I, I'd say I was probably I was kind of lost in the mentality that I, you know, I let. I let my father down, I let my, my mum down, I let my family down because once I got the contract to go to first grade, I ended up becoming the um, the main the main source of income. <clears throat> and so I was pretty much providing, um, you know, paying off a mortgage and, and providing for my family at that time. And it was a big responsibility and I understood that, you know, it was now my responsibility to take on. Um, my dad's getting a bit older. I need to, you know, continue to play football. I needed to get another contract in order to, you know, provide for for them for all the, all the things that they've done for me. Yeah. And um, yeah, the those two three months were pretty tough. Um, you know, not being able to provide for them during that period and not being able to give as much as I wanted to give. Um, but when I did have the the contract with South, that was pretty tough. That was um. A battle in itself. Um, yeah, it was it was hard making. It wasn't hard making ends meet. Like um, working wasn't the problem. It was just the fact that I felt like I let them down. Did you feel like you let yourself down? Um, I was more worried about them than myself, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't really care about myself to be to be fair. Yeah, like I I I'd, I want to do everything for my parents. Because the reason I asked that, like you were in a position where so many players would dream of being mm. in you know like you went from under 20s at south you had two great great years there you've gone on to play first grade the year after you score and you scored in the first touch i think in your debut wasn't it like yeah, first yeah, touch yeah. of the I was, ball I was, I was pretty lucky so, everyone was looking at greg because <laughs> greg's greg greg's and, greg. And so I, yeah i managed to creep uh, creep over I, I saw it i saw it and it's almost like like you said you had the responsibility um of you know having to provide for the family well, did that pressure ever get to you as a player, being at, when you yeah, when you were at Souths? Definitely, plenty of times. Yeah, um, but you wouldn't show. I don't feel like you wouldn't show it. No, nah. you would have. I feel like you're the type of person to internalize it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just the way. Like uh, it was just, uh, the only way I knew how to deal with it. It was just um, keep it to myself and get on with my day. Um, yeah, you know that's, that's how I see my dad do a lot of things, and so I try to mimic it. You, well, let's see for that first played junior Kiwis to the CIFA that was playing one or two years with a uh, year and a half first grade with the Souths. What changed in that, in that time block? Um, I started drinking a lot more often. Um, I'd not touched the yeah, alcohol pretty much my whole life until I started playing f footy because drinking is a big part of footy culture. Oh yeah. Well, no, and no. Um, yeah. yeah, I picked it up, picked up the bug of, you know, drinking beer and, going out and stuff and I realized during that period I realized that I sacrificed so much that I never really celebrated it or never really gone out and just been you know an 18 19 year old uh kid and so I started to go out a lot more often and I started um going out more often and I never uh, how would I say uh I started to give less less uh more or less care than to footy than, you know, just being a 18, 19 year old like kid. You knew you had the talent, you know, that was yeah. always going to be there, but you didn't realize that you had to constantly work hard to kind yeah. of keep growing your game because in the, the day it's going to catch up to you, you know, bad habits start creeping in, your standards yeah. drop and ultimately your performance starts dropping. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that's fair because yeah, I know a few players as well. Like when I was playing twenties, you know, the, the lead up from 16, 18 to 20, they were the superstars, man. And, mm. Uh, I think they were so disciplined. A lot of Polynesian too. They were most of, most of them were mm. Polynesian because they I think they have a lot of you know strict parents, you know strict upbringings, and then obviously when you reach to the age of eighteen and twenty, you know you start experimenting with alcohol, you know going out with your mates, um, and it's all like far out. Like what is this? Like I've never experienced anything like this yeah. before. And it's like 
you, you never got that out of your system no. at an early age. Like when you turned 18, 19, and it kind of happened a bit yeah. later. Um, and then obviously you're getting all the attention of playing, playing in the NRL. You're yeah, playing, yeah. You know, I'm playing with Greg Inglis, Sam Burge. Sam I'm Burge. playing with one of the biggest clubs yeah. in the NRL. I think it was a year after when they won the, the Premier, or the two years after they won the Premiership. So they yeah. were, they were still hot property. Yeah. So you reckon it probably all just got to your head? That, yeah, that yeah it, all, it definitely got to my head. I mm. thought I was on top of the world. I thought I was untouchable. Mm. It turns out I wasn't. <laughs> got the flick. <laughs> Why are you gonna say it like that? <laughs> oh. it like a, oh. a bit of a laugh now, but yeah, yeah of it was honestly like it's just the truth. Did, you said you didn't want to let your parents down, or your, especially your dad. Yeah. Did he ever kind of show that he was disappointed in you after um, that, after your departure from sales? You know, like at the time, they they didn't. They were trying to. Um, they were both trying to. I guess kind of. Kind of water it down a bit and kind of look after me, and, you know, let me know that they were in my corner. But I knew, I already knew deep down that, you know, oh. yeah, that I had disappointed them and, you know, mistreated this opportunity that I had before me. And, um, yeah, I, I, it's the worst feeling. Mm. Like, nothing else compares to it. Um, yeah, letting down your parents who have given you everything, um, sacrificed a lot for the opportunity that I had. And for me to go and stuff that all up, um, yeah, it was a pretty fat slap to their to their faces and their sacrifices and stuff. Is your Tongan yep. and Nuwayan? Yeah, I got a bit of um, Nuwayan ancestry um, through my mum. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my dad's my dad's just straight Tongan. Yeah, um, so, so, so you're, you're probably your your culture in, or in your house you pretty much adopt the Tongan culture. Is that yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I researched Nui, because not, not many people know where Nui is. Is it Nui? Is that Nui. Nui, Nui, forgive me. Um, and I searched it up, and I, what a beautiful country. Like, it's in pretty much, it's mm. in between Samoa and um, Tonga, right? Right yeah, in the middle in between, there? Yeah. Have you ever been to? No, I've, I've never been. I haven't been to Nui or uh, Tonga. Really? Yeah, I've, I've been asked a couple of times yeah. by my parents, but I've always, I don't find... You know, I didn't get the excitement of traveling overseas or anything. You know, like scared of flying, eh? Yes. <laughs> Are you yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I'm actually yeah, I'm scared of flying, but like I don't find the um the excitement in it and all. You know, like yeah. I, I don't really like I, I would get excited for the for that particular <laughs> moment, but then I'll be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I like I like being just home. Fly to England was a mission. Like for yeah, the World that, Cup. that was that was pretty hectic. That was not normal. Um, oh, it took a day to get there. <laughs> yeah, I, I slept majority of the way. Did you? Um, yeah, I could yeah. see you sleep like a rock. Yeah, because I I, <laughs> I I just didn't want to wake up, open the you know the blind and look outside and yeah, you know, in the air and stuff and there's a bit of turbulence or something and whatnot and yeah, I didn't want to have to deal with all that. Spe speaking of Tonga, like I'm actually surprised you're actually here. Like I thought you would have been picked in the the Tongan side. Um, I think it just shows like how competitive they are as well. But I still yeah, yeah. feel like I still feel like surely there should have been a spot for you in that team. No, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, myself, I, I didn't end the campaign back in twenty two on a good note with with coach, and I think it's still something that we need to work over. Um, you you don't see eye to eye with the coach? No, we we didn't we didn't see eye to eye at the, at the during that camp. Um, you know, I thought I should have, I thought I could have played a couple more games, but, you know, obviously I didn't get selected and, you know, whatever happened, happened. And, um, but now, yeah, not getting selected for that. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't burning because, you know, that's that's all I wanted this year. It was one of my goals to you know, get back into that jersey. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. Like, I still back him. Of course. All the way. Um, and, you know, whatever's happened between me and the coaches, between me and him. But, um, you know, yeah, still, still going to be backing them and cheering for him. Have you been given a reason of what what it is you you weren't why you weren't selected? Like no, something I you can work on? No, I haven't. I haven't talked to him since the World Cup, and I think the last conversation we had was, you know, he had to back. Um, I think it was yeah Moses Sully, which you know why wouldn't you back him? He's he's a weapon. Um, but yeah, he had to pick Moses Sully. That was the last co conversation we had, and he. He's saying that you know he feels bad because he keeps bringing on bad news week in week out. But, you know I understand like you know it's it's your job to 
to pick the best team thing. And, you know, he's he seen that was his best team and, you know, I credit him for being straight and stuff. But, yeah, it's just it's rugby league, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes you get picked, sometimes you don't. But either way, you just got to continue on. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Oh, I've got a doubt you'll be back in the, the red jersey, similar to, similar to this jersey that I'm wearing, uh, <laughs> rocking the same colours <laughs> with, uh, with with your Tongans. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like speaking – I was speaking of the international game, like, I don't know, if I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, I came out and defended Ponga. You know how we came out and he goes, oh, I didn't want to play yeah, for Australia. Yeah, didn't want to play for Australia. Man, there was that much news, hysteria going around that – yeah. Then there is about these games coming up. Like I've heard nothing about these games. Like I, I, I saw that New Zealand Rugby League put a post out that the Christchurch game was sold out. Fucking, I haven't heard anything yeah. about that. Yeah. We've, got, we've got Australia versus Tonga coming up this week and no one's spoken about that as well. Massive matchup. Yeah. I think it's one of the strongest teams um, Tonga's ever had, especially if we're talking on form. Yeah. And I feel like in terms of your spine, like you're in a pretty good yeah, position. Pretty good like position, Katoa. Yeah. I don't know if you've you obviously had something to do with him, I think, in the World Cup. If he yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. I was there. Uh, he's – With him, yeah. He looks something special, man. Like He's, spe he's grown so much in the crazy. last year or two. Mm. Uh, it's crazy to to think about what he's going to accomplish in the next coming year, like a couple of years coming now that he's um just playing first grade consistently and he's in the, a first grade system. Mm. And it's pretty scary what, yeah, what he can accomplish. All right, miss and peace probably for the uh, for the puzzle with you guys. Speaking about back to you now. Before I forget, uh, we were speaking about Penrith and your time there. Um, obviously, we crossed paths for, for a bit. You 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 played St Mary's for a couple of games too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Like how, how? Like how, how did you go from Junior Kiwis to all the way to Ron Massey Cup in such a short amount of time? Like, yeah, you, you were playing. Obviously, you went to sign with Penrith to play Cup, but then you end up at St Mary's. Like, what happened there? Oh, I needed to – it was probably the first two, three weeks. Um, yeah, I just needed to get game fitness and oh, just, yeah. um, you know, get, work my way around the system and get to know the system before – Of course. Yeah, I play, I play and go and represent the club. Um, now, funny thing, I was actually playing with Sonny Luke. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, we played St. Mary's together and we were just – yeah, we were just having fun. We were just um, – it was a bit of a laugh, but yeah, it was just fun. Um, playing Ron Massey is like actually pretty enjoyable. Um, There's no pressure. No pressure. No media. Hectic banter, but really hectic banter. Really? Yeah. What, what? Wait, go give me something. Bro, someone was calling me a fat shit, like, <laughs> and like I get it. I was I was fat at the time, and uh, <laughs> uh, I look over, and it's another fat guy, like he was calling me a fat shit. <laughs> I was, I was just on the field. I think like, that's crazy. Like you're calling me fat. You're fat shit yourself. Bro. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the banter was probably the most enjoyable thing out of all of it. Because man, without that, like, I, mean, I probably would have just hard. been like, yeah, fuck, yeah, this is shit. I don't want to play here. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This and that. Mm. But um, yeah, the banter was like uh, what made it enjoyable, and um, yeah, just going back and forth with them made it more competitive. Yeah, and yeah, brought the best version of myself at that time. To that game, so yeah, I love that. Yeah, uh, we all love a bit of good banter from time to time. Mm. Um, no chance of staying, re signing with Penrith. There was no option for you to stay. Oh, well, at, at the time, um, I'm not even sure if there was an option to stay or re sign. I'd, I was already, I already settled on the point that you know, I'm pretty happy to give this up. Like, yeah. I'm pretty happy to just go back to work and just. You know, be around my family and just you know work hard for them. Yeah, um, I was pretty happy to walk away from footy and just you know just live life. Yeah, yeah. Just um, yeah. So why Newtown? You end up going to Newtown after yeah. that. So well, how did that happen? Like you didn't sign a first grade contract with with Cronulla, right? You no. signed you so you signed a cup contract with yeah. uh with Newtown. With Newtown, pretty cool club. I played there last it's year. Active, eh? Yeah, they, I, they're fans, man. They're die, oh, die. Yeah, the same same exact people you see every week. Whether Staunch you're playing loyal. at home, yeah. Whether you're playing at home or away, probably the best club to go to, I reckon. Yeah. Um, if you're not playing great or in a great system, mm. if you want to enjoy your footy and if you want to get a, the most out of footy, whether it be having a laugh and just enjoying your footy and yeah. then the other bit of professionalism as well, 
New Town's your club. Yeah. The Bella, was he there? The assistant coach? Yeah, you know what? He'll give me dirt if I don't give him a shout out. Oh, you did talk did you talk to him? Nah, he always brings it up. Every time he brings it up, he he always <laughs> says he's the main reason why he got me to New Town. And really? You know what? Truthfully, he is. He's the one that called me um and, and told me to come to New Town and have a run. But at the time, mm. Wes, you know Wes. Yes. Um Wes was playing there. Wes's mum and my mum, they're sisters, and we're, oh, we're, pretty clo- we're pretty close. No way. And so I was working, yeah, I was working with Wes. Um, we were doing containers, and um, he was, um, he was the, I'd say he's the main reason why I went to Newtown. Mm. Um, you know, he, he said it's the best club you know, for him, and I, I took his word for it, and I went with him. Um, wow. And yeah, that year ended up being the most enjoyable time like of rugby league ever in my life. Um, I don't know how we won the comp. <laughs> I don't know how we won the grand final, both grand finals. Um, yeah, our training schedule, our training, our training days were pretty consistent. But what we were doing is. <laughs> I don't know how we won. We lost. We lost the first five games. Yeah, I we remember the that. First this is twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Started twenty nineteen. We lost the lost the first five games, and we're all sitting there scratching our asses, thinking, "Fuck, this is going to be a long year." But um, yeah, I don't know. We we just gelled. The we same thing happened this year. The first five rounds, they they were losing, yeah. and then they end up winning the New South Wales Cup Grand Final. They all play. Obviously, they lost the the yeah. state championship Grand Final, but. But still a great year, mm. yeah. Because I, I was there too, and I'm like we were trained like twice a week, then we'll play. Yeah, and I was just like, man, this is this is so cruisy, yeah. like compared to NRL. Compared to NRL, just. But I think I think it needs to be in a, in a way because yeah. you've got new like obviously reserve grade. You have got guys that are working all day, then coming yeah coming after up. having to train. Yeah, it's train. delayed. It's cold and more risk of injury. Exactly know, stuff. But yeah, we were playing like we play touch or offside touch. For what forty minutes, and then that'll be the session done. <laughs> and then th- th- that's on Tuesday. <laughs> oh. And then come come Thursday, yeah. we'll do a couple of sets, a bit of a pose against um, Ron Massey. But it, the training wouldn't go longer than forty minutes. And after we all go sit in the shed and have uh, manush pizza. What? Oh, you every, don't still do that every Thursday? <laughs> yeah, so like last year, like after training sessions, we'll have yeah. pizzas. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at some of the guys. I'm yeah, I think it's like a. It's a tradition now. Yeah. I'm, I'm like looking around. I'm like, there's a few dogs' bodies going around. I'm like, <laughs> boys, you sure you want to be putting that in your guts? Or? Yeah, it was wow. funny because we used to sit there and we used to eat the pizza and think, ah, you know, we're, we're, we're in Newtown. We're in New South Wales. And then all the Ron Massey boys would come in and they'll be trying to come in and sneak pizza as well. Oh, how good. But, um, <laughs> good. Yeah, it was just a good year of just um, enjoying your footy, having a laugh. You know, you had good company with the boys that were playing at the time as well. Like, Everything just clicked somehow and we ended up making the grand final, winning mm. that mm. and then winning the national grand final. Um, both of the boot of Billy Magulius. That's crazy. That was crazy, man. The yeah. way you guys, the way you won that grand final, far. You know what? During the season, if he kicked that ball, we already knew that ball was going out or it was going to be a shit kick. Yeah. But he somehow managed to pull it off. And he's, he's got now a, we're all kissing his ass. He's got a knack for like clutch plays. Like you wouldn't think it for the guy, a guy like his size, right? Like yeah. he's got silky hands, always no, had. Real, yeah, real skillful. Yeah. Um, yeah, being – I think for him, like he was always skillful. He knew what to do. Like he was – he had a high footy IQ, but it's just he, he lacked in the physical side. Yeah. Um, that was the only thing, but – yeah, gun player mm. can play. Definitely kick a ball now, but um, yeah. Because you played with some of your teammates in Cronulla right now. Like you played with, I think Sione was in that team. Sione yeah. Katoa, Sione, Ronaldo, um, yeah, Ronnie, Will, Willie, yeah, Will K was playing that time. Brails, Rudolph, yeah, Toby, Toby Rudolph, Blake Braley, um, <sighs> Tricky, Braden oh, Trindle. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we're all playing. Um, Stack team. Yeah. Speaking of Newtown, like I can understand how enjoyable it is to play there. Like the yeah. fans, the people involved with the club, like so many people volunteer to just be yeah. part of the club and help out in any way, any means possible, right? Um, play with some great teammates of yours that you're still currently playing with. What other relationships did you form at, uh, at Newtown? Because you said you had a pretty fun year. Yeah, I had, um, yeah, formed a lot of relationships with people who are part of the club and 
you know, Terry and such. But yeah, I also yeah. had like family family members that, you know, backed the club as well. Um, you know, one supporter um, that was always around the boys, <coughs> sorry, um, did everything for the boys. Was the happiest man that I know was um, his uh, name was Zaleki. Mm. He uh, he passed away a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know a lot a lot of things that I've taken away from him was, you know, um, he was willing to do anything and everything for uh, anyone. Um, happiest man alive. You'd never see him down at all. Was always the first to crack a joke whenever anything was serious. Um, he was just, yeah, the best bloke that, you know, anyone could have been to anyone else. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah, going to be missed. He, he will be missed, definitely missed by anyone and everyone that knows him. I just want to yeah, send out my condolences to obviously his family and friends and obviously to you, brother. I know, yeah. I know he was a pretty close friend of yours and pretty much family to you. And uh, I can understand how, uh, how much he was loved within the community as well. Like I think in Marrickville, there was a massive shrine of uh, for him and yeah. there was flowers and uh, I just got a coffee. I get a coffee across the road almost every single day at the Post Cafe and um, there hasn't been one day where someone hasn't dropped a, you know, a fresh pair of flowers yeah. for him. So he must have left a, a nice touch to a lot of people's hearts, man. So Yeah, he's just, yeah. He's just, you, I can't speak any highly of any other person than yeah, him. It's just, yeah, he's, he's that... The love that everyone is showing him is, is the love that he's reciprocated back to everyone he knows. Um, if you don't mind me asking, obviously it would have come out a pretty big shock to you when you heard of his passing. Um, did that affect you in any way with your performance, or like, like how did you, yeah, how did you kind of come to the realization that your one of your best friends had passed away? Um, I found the news out. I think we were playing. Penrith, yeah, Penrith that week was the week of the, uh, yeah, the final before the grand final. Um, and the news come early Tuesday morning and we we had just gone into, uh, I think we were doing screening and we were just doing, um, starting our typical day, the start of the week, first day back in. And uh, I went and done that and I come back to my phone and my sister's messaged um, our family group chat and said, um, yeah, Lecky's passed away and sent the uh, the link of the, uh, I think it was Channel 7 or Channel 9 News uh, that had come on the news the night before. And I remember watching it and I, th and I was shocked and I was thinking, no way, like, um, this can't have happened. Um, not, to, not to him. No way this could have happened. And uh, I remember, yeah, the, just the whole day, was just going slow and um, you know, I couldn't think of anything else. Like we had meetings of about Penrith and what we what our attacking plan was and um, what their attack plan was and how we were going to defend it and such. And I, I just remember that whole week just being a blur. Um, and yeah, I just yeah, it rattled me. It rattled me. Um, I, don't know, I remember sitting in the uh, team meeting and um I just had tears tears come down my, and I knew I still had a job to get um a job to do but it was yeah it wasn't going to be easy um especially with my mind not being on the job on my job and what I need to do it was yeah off with um yeah just thinking about Lecky oh, that would be so tough man far out like I know I don't think people understand like with professional sportsmen like you know we have to sacrifice a lot to be in the position yeah. we're in like we're in a very privileged position but you know when times like when tough times like that happen like it's almost you can't be you can't show too much emotion because you've got a job to do and you've yeah. got to put your teammates first and yeah. we're in a results driven business and man that would have been so tough to put in the back of your mind to really focus and play mm. one of the biggest games of the season against Penrith in, yeah. in that semi-final which you yeah. did play good in um yeah. oh no I, f I feel like I didn't play too well. Like, um, okay. there's no excuses. Like, even though I was thinking about that, I still, you know, had a job to do and I should have been um, better than what I thought I was. Mm. So. At the end of the day, like, mm. it's still a task where it's not really easy to do. Like, if someone yeah. at work had a close friend, family member pass away, they take the day off work. 
Like we don't have that luxury. No, we don't. Yeah, you know, it's just we're part of a machine that's just constantly revolving, man. We just gotta, we're there to do a job. Can't. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I got some. Like we're playing on Saturday. Oh, I've got my uh, cousin's wedding or uncle. I got something on. I got a funeral, yeah. and like it's, it's too almost bad. Like we, too bad. Like we, <laughs> too we gotta bad, we gotta yeah. play. Like it's, it is what it is, man. Um. But yeah, bro, I want to appreciate you for um opening up like that. I know that would have been hard to to talk about, but. Um, yeah, man, my condolences again to, to yeah, Lakini's family yeah. and to you, bro. Um, back to Newtown, obviously. Um, you get promoted to playing uh, the Cronulla's first grade team the following year. Yeah. Was it a train and trial contract? Yeah, it was a, um, it was a 20 week training trial. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, contract. And so during that preseason, um, you know, I thought, yeah, I didn't think. Well, I did think, uh, reflect on it before going into it mm. um, about the opportunity that I had. And I remember just sitting down thinking, you know, like if I'm going to give it a crack, then I'm going to put everything into it. And you know, if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. Like I can just go back to being content and just continue working same as I was before that. And I was working with uh, Greg Eastwood at that time. So we were working... I finished um, the Garbos and ended up working with Greg Eastwood. We were working, we were doing deliveries for an appliance com company called Winnings. Yep. And that was pretty fun. That was actually pretty hectic. Like, what was fun about it? Um, man, just we were working. Majority of our work was in the Blue Mountains. So. Oh wow. Yeah, we were, we would pick all our appliances up, um, everything at the warehouse, and then we would travel out to Blue Mountains and do a couple of deliveries and install a couple of washing machines and fridges and then take their ones back and yeah, yeah. back to the warehouse to throw it out and stuff. And, you know, I was pretty happy with it. Like I was, I was pretty content because I, I was just happy. Um, no pressure, you know, um, responsibility was still there, but it wasn't hounding on me as, as much as it was when I was playing uh, first grade for South Sydney. Okay. Like I was just, um, yeah, I was just content, real happy. Um, and yeah, um, going into, yeah, that pre-season, like it was all or nothing. And if it didn't work then, so what? Wow. Yeah. So what? The, I, was, I was back to, um, back to working with Greg Eastwood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going back to the Blue Mountains. Yeah. Wow. Well. Um, yeah. During that, um. At the start of that preseason, uh, uh, there was a at lunch we had this segment where they would pick a couple of players and you'd get up and you'd explain your story, like you, where'd you come from, junior club, um, siblings and that, and all the boys they're fucking gronks when it comes to like, <laughs> yes. that. Um, being be vulnerable in front of the boys yeah, is the hardest and thing all, all, in the world. They said gronks. <laughs> Why? They, make, they make you like they, they try and make it worse than what it is. <laughs> like they kick you while you're down. And who's the worst at doing that at Cronulla? Um, I think I already know the answer. I think who, I already, who, who do you think? Ronaldo? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Toby um, Rudolph? Toby's not that bad. I'd say Ronnie's the worst. Toby's up there. Um, Sioni? Nah, he's actually, he's real quiet, but when he says something, it's funny. We all just laugh. <laughs> but, um, Royce Hunt. Royce Hunt was one of them as well. Really? And speaking about Royce Hunt, we, um, I got up and I had to explain my story and um, tell him everything. I pretty much told him everything and I just, you know, black and white and just let him know, like, look, this is, you know, the opportunity I have. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm back to there. But I got sacked from South, had an opportunity to play a cup at uh, Penrith and then played Newtown, won the comp with the boys and then now I'm here. Um, this is my only opportunity, there's nothing left. And then, um, yeah, got along well with the boys after that as well. And uh, I was actually talking with Royce Hunt and he was on a um, similar similar contract as well. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, we kind of made a promise. We we made a promise to ourselves, you know, like, um, you know, let's get the best out of each other. And, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't get the opportunity, then it is what it is. Yeah. But um, let's just make sure we tick, tick all the boxes. And we do everything that we can to get this opportunity. Um, and, yeah, um, during that preseason, you know, we just worked hard. 
Um, worked hard to get our opportunity and it wasn't until after the first trial that um, at the time uh, John Morris was the coach. Uh, Bomber, Bomber approached uh, Royce and said that he had got the he got the last top thirty top thirty training oh, contract. Oh wow! And then he but he, he came up to me after that and told me that I had got the uh, the last I think it was development development yeah yep. development contract as well. And then um yeah we went from there and we played. Oh, we didn't play. I think I wasn't until after the COVID period that COVID had hit and then we come back. Um, we all come back and we had to quarantine and yeah. stuff and play, play at stadiums with no crowds and stuff. So I just want to ask you quickly, like the top 30, right? You got top 30. So the top 30 are for pretty much your main NRL squad. Yeah. Um, within that squad, that top 30, uh, each player are pretty much first picked to play in an NRL team, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. After that, there's development. I think you got a development contract, which is yep. uh, four players, maybe four to six, yeah, yeah, maybe four to six players. I'm pretty um, sure. And then I think it's pathways, or, th or I think yeah, it's cup pathways. plays after that. Yeah. Um. So going back to that, like, how did you? Well, how were you able to leapfrog someone in the top thirty to end up debuting? Well, um, I think there was a. Um I think at that time, so when you when we came back from uh, after the COVID period and and stuff, um, there was a rule. I'm pretty sure that um, Bomber told me that uh, um, this you need before the season exemption. Well. You, need a, you need an yeah, exemption. Like, or something. Um, yeah, there's an exemption, but then um, I think you can play. You can play development players. I think it was from like round eleven on. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you can get selected. Um, to play from then but then after the once the COVID period happened when we came back you were allowed to select any like development player or not you were allowed to select you were eligible for selection gotcha yeah from then so yeah I think um, once we come back I think it was I'm not so sure it was a couple of games we had a bit a couple <coughs> oh shit sorry <laughs> oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> You, hey, we haven't even had the chili yet, and you're coughing already. It's like you can smell it or Hold something, on. bro. Uh, bro, I need to show everyone. Look at this. <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Look at this. <laughs> you got a sauce. <laughs> the photo of himself. himself hey, hey, you see that sauce? It just it just melts the fat, you know? You just drink that and it melts the fat away. <laughs> I don't know this thing looks like it's been sitting there for ages. <laughs> it has it, it has it, it has it, I promise. I take good care of it. Stitcher. I take very good care of it, I promise. Hey, well, sorry. <laughs> Back to what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Shit, I've lost <laughs> lost where we were. We I think you went you said you came back from um you all came back from COVID. Oh, yeah, we came back. Played a couple of games. Yeah. yeah sit with the water. So we come back. We come back from the COVID period and we had a couple of games and I was the 18th, 18th man for a couple of them. And then I finally got my first crack. It was against uh, the Cowboys up in Townsville. And... Um, we were down, we had a couple of injuries and um, needed someone to play middle. And that whole preseason, I ended up training in the back row and then a bit in center. Um, and then they gave me a crack and Bomber pulled me into, pulled me aside at training. It was after the field session. It was like, um, how are you confident enough to, to play in the middle? And I was like, yeah, um, yeah, back row and middle, fairly similar, but you know, there's only a few distinctions between both, like um, ones that link to the yeah. edge, and then the other one, you know, you got to you're in the trenches. Yeah, you just <laughs> you're just in the washing machine, just <laughs> doing the same thing over and over again. And um, yeah, it told me that you know I was a fair chance of playing this week, so you just keep training up, keep keep training hard, and put my head down, and um, let let my hard work speak for itself. And then um. I remember driving home, it was a Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, and they had released the team out to the media and my phone was going off and I didn't know, what, like I was, I was driving at the time, I didn't, I didn't know why and I was, um, it wasn't until I uh, pulled over and everyone was telling me, have a look at the team, li uh, team list um, and they were saying in our WhatsApp chat, 
you know, congratulations. Um, and I kept getting notifications. And I was thinking, you know, God, what the fuck's this? And I had a look at the team list and my name was on the team list. And I was, um, yeah, I remember just sitting there and just soaking it all in. Like, um, yeah, I had butterflies and, um, you know, I, I sat there, had a, I was teary as well, shed a couple of tears because, you know, I'd worked my ass off this opportunity. I'd finally been given um, the opportunity to not only play for myself, but play for my family and mm -hmm. finally give back to my family after losing it all. And I think that day was the day that, you know, I knew, I 100% knew that I didn't belong anywhere else and that I wanted to give this like a real hard crack and, you know, make the most out of the opportunity rather than just, you know, make, um, be ungrateful and just piss it all away like previous opportunities. So, um, yeah. And then um, played my, um, yeah, made my club debut. And I remember after, I think it was about my second or third run, I think they hit me twice in the one set and I was gassed. My legs went heavy. And I remember it was, it was a close, real close game too. And I was looking around, I was trying to get, like have a little rest. And yeah. I, but it's like pretty much impossible in the middle. You can't. Because you just got to be in the go. Mm. Um, you got to be constantly moving. Yeah, man. constantly moving. If Making you don't, tackles. Someone could, yeah, someone could steal that gap and, you know, make a fool out of yourself. So, yeah, I remember that being like probably the toughest game I've been in for a long time. And, um, yeah, but afterwards, yeah, it's just the, it's the best feeling, like accomplishing your goal and um, especially – with what you had been through previous, like to that, yeah, it was just um, man, it was real satisfying and real gratifying as well. When I ask you about the moment you got to share that news with your dad, what was that like? Yeah, it was um, um, it was pretty special. Um, it was um, uh, yeah, it was it was. It was good because I, I wanted to make the most out of this deal but I also wanted to give back to my parents again and sitting down to tell them I remember mumbling a lot because I couldn't get it out of myself because it you know it was, I was very emotional I was already crying at this point and then um to finally tell them you know it just felt like a whole heap of weight was just off my shoulders and um you know I just felt like I was on top of the world again, but it was, it was different. Like uh, I wasn't on top of the world being cocky or anything. It was just on top of the world because I finally accomplished what I set out to do for them. Mm. And um, yeah, it was just the best thing in the world. Just embracing both my parents and letting them know that, that you know, um, all your sacrifices went for naught. Like even though I, I, I messed up the first opportunity, you know, like we're back here, we're back again and I would finally be able to do, continue doing what I was doing before. I love that, man. Yeah. That is so cool. Uh, you also obviously cemented a starting spot within the team in the next two years. And two years later, you're playing Origin in the Sky Blue Jumper. Like, yeah. Did you, it was like, were you pitching yourself at that point? Like, literally, the two, three years, you're a delivery driver. And now um, you're playing on the biggest stage. Or New South Wales, like, or did it happen fast? Like, were you able to really, like, what was that moment yeah, like? Yeah, I, I didn't really soak it in much. Um, I feel like I didn't have the opportunity to soak it in, and I, and I felt like it was really fast. Um, now getting the call from Freddie, I think it was Sunday morning. Um, yeah, he uh, called me and he said, um, had a pull up from the game and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm sweet. And um, he was asking me if I was still, because we played in Coffs Harbour uh, the night before and I ended up driving back home um, that night, same night. It's about five, six hour drive. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we a group of us ended up coming back home because Tonga were playing that week as well. Oh, wow. um, they had the mid-year test against New Zealand. And so a couple of us were coming back um, in order to spend that Sunday with our families and then fly out on Monday. And I already talked to um, Christian Wolf at the time saying that, you know, I'm um, having received the uh, a call from uh, Freddie to play for Origin yet. So uh, locked me in. I'm coming to play for Tonga. Wow. And then the um, we got home that, that night and the next day uh, Freddie called me at 9 
um, I think I missed his first call. I think it was a missed call and then um, picked up the second call and he, yeah, he ended up calling and said, how, how did I pull up, um, how to recover, uh, where am I now? And I said, I was in Sydney and he goes, all right, well, um, meet me here. I think it was the, uh, meet me at the hotel, I think it was around five o'clock or something. I was thinking, oh, um, shit, like I, I got selected for Tonga as well and I've already given my word. And I was like, oh, I had to make a decision at that point whether to play for um, Tonga or to play Origin. And um, I told him, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call back because I, I have to talk to the Tonga coach. Um, and, yeah, I made the decision to play Origin because why wouldn't you? It's the pinnacle of your game. Mm. You know, like as much as I wanted – like I, I still want to give back to my parents and play for Tonga for them as well. Of and also for myself, you know. It's part of who I am, and it, it is who I am. Um, but I wanted, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't have regretted not going with Origin. I knew I was going to regret the the decision to play, um, not play Origin, and then go play for Tonga. Um, so I decided, you know, like I'll go play Origin, um, get a feel for it, um, and then um, I oh well, I asked Freddie, I got him. Sorry, I asked him oh, if I'm playing, like, am I playing? Because if I'm not playing, I'm not coming. <laughs> and he said, yeah, you're, you're in the 17. And I was like, oh, okay, sweet, I'll give you a call back. <laughs> I'm going to go call Christian Wolf and let him know that, you know, I'm going to go play Origin. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I had to call Christian Wolf and stuff and let him know. And, oh, my God. Yeah. What a goose chase, man. You're making calls that front yeah, and center. It was, um, but your first game, your debut, like, you absolutely smacked Queensland, right? Like, yeah. For that, that first game, that debut, I think it was game two. And um, yeah, game two, it was like a stark cool. contrast between game two and game three, right? Like yeah. game two, top of the world, everything went your way, dream debut. Yeah. Game three, you play against Queensland and you guys get beat and, and cooked that yeah. game. Um, what was the difference in those two games? Like, in, I'd like, say moments, just moments, the little moments that we lost um, just changed momentum for them. Um, I had a fair few moments for myself where you know, the missed tackle on uh, Ponga, I think it was a Romy threw a uh, ball over the top where I couldn't re recover the ball back and it ended up going out. Uh, I had another moment where I dropped the ball like five metres out from my own try line in the second half as well. Yeah, just moments like we, we yeah, I didn't, I lost a couple of moments myself and they were huge for our team, put our team on the back fence. Did you, was there anything you did differently for that game? Like in terms of your prep, like um, was there any regrets going to that game? Like obviously you regret the mistakes, right? Yeah. But like, can you pinpoint a reason why they happened? I feel like I, because during that game, that was the game that uh, Gags and, um, and uh, Berto, had that little yeah. scuffle and had that little punch up and stuff. And I remember being on site and I was already amped up. I feel like I wasted too much energy on trying to do something special than, rather than just doing my job. Yeah. The and emotions got the best of you. Yeah, emotions uh, emotions definitely got the best of me, but I should have been focused on just doing my job rather than trying to make something happen out of nothing and trying to do something special. Yep, yep. I was going to say after that, you cop some some criticism. Yeah. Like, did that take a toll on you? But, but uh, at all? Um, yeah, it did. It did. Um, you know, there was a bit of adversity around it as well. Like, I knew I fucked up. Like, and then to hear from other people as well, you know, it's, it, it's daunting. It becomes daunting. But if you see it in a different perspective, where um, you can take ownership of that and then work hard to not get back to that point, then mm. yeah, you know, it is. It is. It uh, ends up being what it is and then um you also learn a lot about yourself during that period as well um you know you develop a bit of character and for sure yeah you learn to co uh, come back from that and be resilient you don't learn anything when you're comfortable when everything's all nah. you know nice and fine everything's smooth sailing i feel like when when the shit hits the fan so yeah. you really tr really really find your real self comes exactly out, yeah. right exactly right builds character adversity like you said resilience uh you know People, all this massive craze about ice baths is going on now. Like, what? Why do people like ice baths? It's because 
they're uncomfortable and you really mm. find your true you really see your yeah. true self come out right ah oh, like you show like a bit of emotion and like it's about like really being still yeah. still minded yeah um and just embracing that uncomfortability and i'm sure you would have learned so much because that would have been the first time you actually would face any criticism in your career right like yeah public media um so yeah definitely would have galvanized yeah. you for sure speak when you went back to club like it's fair to say like you've had uh you found a sense of belonging with Cronulla, like you feel yeah. right at home um the last couple of years you know there's been around like people have been saying oh Cronulla can't go that extra step like they mm -hmm. just whenever finals time comes um they bundle up straight away they just can't handle the big moments right does that yeah do you guys hear that what do you what do you guys do as a team when you hear that noise um yeah like, no yeah I, the team definitely like we we definitely hear it a lot and i'd be lying if i said that it doesn't affect us but because we bring it up pretty much every year too like we talk about it but this year we've just learned to learn to be mentally resilient like you know, see everything in a different light and different perspective where everyone would say that, you know, when it came to finals, we, were, we would crumble. And this year we just showed, like, we viewed it as a challenge. Like, you know, why not? You know, eventually when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go forward is up. And it's not even rock bottom, really. Like, yeah. you just got to – there's only a couple of stepping stones left. Yeah. To lift the NRL trophy, right? Yeah. Like you guys did that this and year. We were, yeah, we were just one one step away. One step from, away. Yeah, playing that game, and I think we in preseason we instilled a lot of belief. Uh, our recent preseason going into um, this season, we worked um, a lot on our defence and just a lot on our um, mental training. Mental training. We've done a lot of mental training, and we were. We were training a lot better as well. Like our training intensity um, had gone to another level where we're pretty much training the way we played. You have to. Yeah. Totally agree. I feel like early in my career, like, you know, you want to kind of build throughout the week. Yeah. The, the only thing on my mind when I was a kid was just like thinking about game day, right? Mm. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I still train and stuff like that. But there's always that, that part of me where I was like, oh, I don't want to go too hard because of, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I still want to be fresh for the game. For the you game know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like what you said, you got to train how you play because when you do that, you go into a game confident. You've you've ticked every box. You've got no reason to go into a yeah. game anxious and not confident in performing because yeah, yeah. you know you've done everything. You're, you've done everything during the week to kind of get ready for the big stage. Um, so that's a pretty that's a pretty good, um, important learning uh, experience for you boys. Tell me about Fitzy. Like, what's he like as a coach? You said you've done a bit of mental side of yeah. things. Like, he's obviously predominantly a defensive coach, I think. Yeah, yeah. He's real real um, big on his defense. Um, what makes him such a great coach? He's just genuine. He's real genuine and he's uh, he's all about the person before the player. Like, he's, he's big on you being a good person um, and he puts that above you being a good player or a great player. Like... Um, it's part of, it's part of our culture now, pretty much. Like, I love that. You know, everyone everyone focuses on what they need to do on the footy side and stuff. But you know, we all um, we all want to be good good people before we even good players. You know, but yeah, he's um he's the man. He's uh exactly what we needed as a club, and um, I see him staying at the club for a long time, very long time. He's just he's loved by everyone. Yeah, mm. I, can't, I uh I had him as an assistant in 2014 uh, for the Kangaroos, and yeah, I can understand and, and relate to exactly what you're saying, man. Genuine is yeah. probably the first word that comes to mind. Uh, he he gives you a lot of time, yeah, uh, and he really like wants you, like he really values, um, I guess the learning aspect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that that rapport yeah, with player yeah. and coach, and um just bouncing ideas off each other or oh, what do you think in this scenario yeah. what about that you know oh i think you can do that but you know like sometimes as players like whenever we're kind of um criticized for something yeah. we kind of get our guard up and yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. but he's got a he's got a knack in like oh, what do you what did you do wrong here what do you think you could have done yeah. better you know what I, mean? I feel like it's easy to be more accountable with him if that yeah, makes yeah, sense yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah definitely uh yeah i think he's, he's a great on. coach i think he'll be there for i think he'll be a very successful coach for for you guys in the in the coming years and um Speaking of the coming years, like next season, you've got Adam Fiddle or Blake coming to the club. Um, what's he like as a player, uh, as a as a character? 
funny. He's very funny. Very funny, but like um So it's fair to say he's gonna enhance the team. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> You've already got a few jokers there. Yeah, we've got a couple, but um yeah, he he'll, he'll bring more banter and laughter to the side, I reckon. But um yeah, the whole lot of punch and experience. I think well. I think it would definitely fill the void that Fafita left. You know what yeah. I mean? That just that mentality, that intensity. He's obviously coming off the back of being prop of the year as well. Um, do you reckon he's the missing key to you guys playing in a grand final or winning a grand final? Well, I feel like we could have played the grand final this year. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. I thought I I really thought that you know this was the year, but um, yeah, you know, we we didn't end up making it, but it's still a pretty good yeah, you know, pretty good result. Yeah, considering what we had gone through during the year with. Tricky, Dale, and... Yeah. You had a lot of change this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Injuries and... You had a change with yourself. Like, you were playing yeah, centers. Yeah, had to, yeah. You've had to adopt now going back to the back row back position. Back row but middle. that just doesn't happen overnight. Like, you have to obviously adjust, um, get your movement patterns right, you know. Like, obviously, be kind of sometimes having to make more tackles yeah. than, you, than you would have in the oh, centers. Oh, fucked on more. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, my, my first point. game, I played back row, back in the back row, I guess. I think it was Canberra. Yeah. They were punishing us, man. Like I had to make that many tackles. I was rooted in the first five minutes. I'd oh. say five to ten minutes. I remember being there and they're like, oh, take the run off the tap. And I'm like, no, nah, fuck, tap and run. Like you go, yeah, I'm yeah. rooted. Yeah, well. I'm used to this. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's that's what I mean. Like you've had Kale come into the centres, yeah. rookie. Like He's a beast. Yeah, Trin, Trick, uh, Trindle as well. Like his second year, he had a bit of mm. disruption in the middle of the year, but – pretty solid consistency towards the back end and obviously Nico like he had yeah, yeah. you know poor guy was like copying criticism left right and center for his performance couldn't really build any momentum um with his with his game this year unfortunately and I reckon he's gonna come back firing next year man I back him heavy uh, and you probably did mm. you probably say the same thing yeah I want to ask you that period like I think the first 10 rounds you guys were first best defensive team in the comp yeah. this season last season I should say you guys play Penrith at home you get smacked by 40 and you went on a bit of a losing streak in that period. Like, yeah. what was the catalyst? Like, why couldn't you use build confidence within that period? Like, you were the, you're almost a shadow of your former selves. Yeah, we um we yeah. started going away from the way we started that year, where we weren't we weren't connecting as much or relying on each other. We were trying to get everything done individually. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, we would like we were trying to do. Get them, win the momentum back for the team individually when we should have been going, um, picking our teammates up and going together, going after the game together. And it showed because we lost a fair few games and it, it took a while for us to learn that lesson. And it wasn't until I think we played Brisbane where we won. Yep. Where we won and we showed, you know, if we go after the game together rather than by ourselves, um, you know, we can come away with the, with the big games and it'll become – Second nature, um, you know, we, we go into our own roles and we rely on each other. We have little short tip ones, or we're, whether we're in the um, in a tackle together, combinations would just come out like that. Mm. And um, yeah, that's all we really needed to do. Like our game plan didn't change or anything. We just we needed to get our, get after the game together rather than individually. So I want to ask you this: twenty twenty five comes around. What's the missing piece for you guys to beat the likes of Melbourne and Penrith to our NRL grand final? Because let's face it, they're, they're going to be yeah. up there again. Battle of field position. They're real good at sticking to their processes and um, kicking in the corners and not getting tired of the that game and just playing the long game throughout the throughout the whole 80, 80 minutes. They don't get bored, eh? No, they don't they're get bored. They're just happy to just do it's the same. four or five hit-ups, yeah. kick to the corner, Defend the set, go back, same. same set until you break. Yeah, same set. Might change a couple of plays here and there, but same thing. Work you down up through the field and then kick it into the corner and then bash you while you're trying to make your way back into their corner. Mm. It's, um, yeah, when, th when that was happening to us, when we played both Melbourne and Penrith, we kind of flinched and we tried to go away from um, that game plan as well. And they ended up making us pay for it. Yeah. And then we just, we mounted up a lot of uh, pressure and accumulated a lot of sets where we were defending 
and we ended up shooting ourselves in the foot by the end of the game because we were too tired. So if he's going to next season, like it's fair to say you guys in a in a premiership window, like you're going from strength to strength. Yeah. You know, you're one game away from a grand final. So what's missing for you guys to actually, you know, take that next step, do you think? I think just self-belief. Like um, we talked about it in, a, in pre-season going into last year. Like, um, you know, you you got to have a bit of cunt about yourself. you got to believe that you're you're the best. For sure. And you got to get after the game the exact same way. Like you can't let profile or the ego of another player get in the way of what you want to achieve. Mm. And I, I felt like that's what we lacked, that bit, little bit of arrogance that, you know, we, we can – Hold our own against the best. And Too nice. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I think if, you know, self, if we have a little bit of self, a little bit more self-belief, then we can go a long way. Yeah, that little bit of self-belief will take us a long way. I feel like Adam will bring that. Exactly. He's the, yeah, he's the missing piece. I love that, brother. I love that. Thanks for sharing. And bro, I want to thank you as well for coming in today. I know it's obviously the off season and you, you've got a million things to yeah, do. And all good. our proud partner, Shoe Grab, have gifted you a nice fresh pair of sneakers. Why don't you dive into that thank and uh, have a look and show them what you got. Let's have a look. You haven't sponsored Ooh. by anyone, are you? Sponsored by anyone? Yeah, yeah, right here. No, nah, but shoes, shoes, <laughs> shoes. Boots, 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 boots. Hey. Yeah, you got Oh, oh yeah, they're hot. They're nice. He's hectic. I've got to be careful because I'm sponsored by Adidas. But yeah, yeah, they are nice. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Well, shout out to Jay. Shout out to Jay. And what's, everyone what's at Shoe Grab. What size foot are you? 12. Oh, yeah, okay. They yeah. look massive, man. Fuck. I'm, like, I'm on 13, but like... Ah. Yeah, he's... Ah, they're nice. Pretty they're nice. nice. They're mad. I think my missus got the same thing, so I'm on the... Um, Oh, that's yeah. cute, bro. That's so cute. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's really are... cute. Oh, let's have a bit of fun now, eh? Yeah. Truth or sauce, it's man. Oh, obviously, you're, you're guessing what the what, what are the chips and the sauce are in front of you. You're about to find out, brother. You found uh, you got two questions to ask me today. So yeah, we, I do, I do. Um, got, you want to go first, or you want me to go first? We're one for one. You want me to go first? You, you can go first. You can go first. All right, all right. Um, question one for you. Why do the boys call you ninja? <laughs> <laughs> Who gave you that? <laughs> Who gave you that? <laughs> um, you um, gave it to him, you fucking sneak. Who? 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 Ronnie, maybe would have told you. There's two other boys that know why. Nah. Um. <laughs> hey, listen, you don't have to answer. <laughs> well, yeah. If you don't answer. We'll get into it. We'll, um, try and melt some fat with his sauce. <laughs> oh, let me, let me uh, do the honest for you, brother. Let me do the honest for you. Uh, I get the sense you like spicy food anyway. Do you? <laughs> Bro, that is a lot. No, no, it's not. Trust me. It's a five cent piece. Bon appetit, brother. And we're off to a good start. Off to a good start. Salute. Has, a num has the, the tongue gone numb yet? It normally that does that. That hit me straight in the throat. Oh, fuck. You should have... <laughs> Uh, don't do that. I'll make it worse. Shoot the qu next question. Next, uh, you, you got a question for me? Uh, yeah. So in um, 2016. Uh, 2016, yeah. How many tries did you score? 2016? Oh, my God. I don't know. 16? It's too bad. No, no, you got it. You got it. You got Was it really? 16, yeah, Was yeah. it really? You got it. <laughs> You got it. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, was it actual? Yeah, you got 16. Oh, I'll be happy with that. I'll have with that. Jay was... shouldn't have said that before the show, bro. Stitch up. Dude, what do you mean? That you scored 16 for. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't hear him. No, before the show, you scored 16 when you were at South. Mm. There's a bit of a clue, you know? Oh, that's exactly why I said it. Oh, oh well. Unlucky, brother. All right, my last one to you. I actually got to read this one out. Um,. So obviously you got you got a taste um, to play Origin. Um, obviously playing semi-finals footy this, just recently as well. Yeah. But I ask you this: Would you rather an Origin series win, or win a semi-finals with the Sharks and play in a grand final? Win semi-final and play grand final. Serious? So, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, um, I believe that actually. I Origin's believe that. Mad, but like you know, I don't sweat and. Uh, 
play with the same boys week in, week out. Like, like we go through a lot, like, with our teammates in during the main season and even before that in pre-season. So yeah, true. I feel like, um, yeah, I can't dog them out just for three games. Even mm. though the three games are, would mean would be hectic as mm. well. Mm. Yeah, I'd rather stay with the boys that I've gone to war with week in, week out. I love that, man. I love that. Anyway, we're going to move on now? Or? No, no, oh. one more question. Oh, what? I've got one for you. Uh, one, uh, one. Are you sure? We can move on if you want. Uh, we, uh, There's uh, not that much memory on the card. <laughs> um, this one will be quick. Is it true that you would give up your New South Wales jersey to win another premiership with Penrith? Wait, have you won a premiership with Penrith? Nah. I just to win one with Penrith. So what I did, brother, I, at the end of 2020, like I was just holding down the slingshot and when I left, I fired them into four premierships, brother. That's, that's how I like to look. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no, I, um, yeah, um, sacrifice one one game or one, or, or uh, yeah, yeah, one yeah, game. One game, one game or one series. Oh, a whole series? Yeah, every day of the week. I'm similar to you. Every day of the week, like that's respect. Yeah, I um, like I'm pretty loyal, like in that sense. Like I was at uh, Penrith gave me my first opportunity. Like Cronulla gave you your first mm. opportunity, really. Um, and the only thing I wanted to do when I was at Penrith was to win a premiership for him. Mm. I love the community. I love the fans. I love the players. I love the staff. Like I just get along with everyone out at the Riff, and um, it's probably the only thing that I. The only thing I kind of regret, like not being able to achieve, it's uh, it's something that kind of does eat away at me uh, from time to time. But um, you know, the reality is we don't always get that fairy tale finish, and mm. um, you know, people kind of crack the joke like, "Oh fuck," you know, like they they just won four in a row. Yeah. Like only if you were like one or one or two years, you know, yeah. down the track, you, you you got the opportunity to at least take take one out with them. But you know, it doesn't it doesn't really eat at me because. End of the day, like I'm, I'm happy. Like I have great relationship with everyone out there that that have won a premiership with Penrith, yeah. and uh, I'm happy to see what they've done. I know how hard they work to get in that position, and yeah. um, you know, when I was at Penrith, we always kind of like made fun of a little bit, like always kind of picked mm. on. Like we always had the kind of, we always had high hopes, but we could never really just take that extra step. Like people used to crack jokes about Gus coming out with that five year plan, and um, I guess now who's laughing? Yeah, you know. Um, beautiful. Well, our next segment, brother, we had Bradman Best uh, on the show previously, and uh, he wrote you a question to answer in that envelope. This is new song. Mm, dive into that. How's that chili, by the way? It sounds like you're unfazed. Fuck. Yeah, right. I'm fucking tearing up. <laughs> Fuck. My eyes are watery. <laughs> Nose running now, too. <laughs> We're almost there, man. We're almost there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Man, last week we had Critter ask Bradman, was I an hour late? And I was legit an hour late. So do, I, do I read this question out? Read it out. <laughs> Does Source think he's an influencer? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's asking you that. He's, he's not asking me. He's asking you. Oh, that's a G up. That's a G up. I don't know. No, I wouldn't say you think that. Nah. Well, I wouldn't say you think that, but um, ah, it's definitely. Nice. He did have his shirt off um just before. Oh, he was, kind of, he was kind of showing it off before. So I was getting kitted up, but you know, he's a bit of an arrogant prick. Oh, please, uh, please. What yeah. were you saying before? Hey, if you got it, you know, you yeah, got, I'll you take got photos. <laughs> nah, yeah, he's, nah, he's a good person, good bloke, genuine. Um, yeah, good for a chat. But nah, I don't think he's an influencer. Oh, bro, I got. You're a man, bro. I can see why your teammates love you. Now, um, you've got the opportunity to write um, a question for our next guest, man. If you pick up that texter, pick up the clipboard, yep. and write away. This is a deep question. It's a personal question. Where, where are we going with this? Don't tell me, obviously. No, it's an uh, interesting one. Interesting one. That's why it's an interesting segment. Might, uh, Anything could happen. Yeah, it might... Uh... I start a bit of beef. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the goal. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we want more, you know, dr dr uh, everything dramatic gets more clicks these days, true? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign it, seal it, and we'll get it delivered, brother. How good. How good. Hopefully it's someone uh, 
It's all good. Uh, whoever's on here next. Can't wait. I actually can't wait. Man, it's been a while since I got this jersey out. Far out. It still fits pretty, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, it's like, like a glove, man. Far, it's a bit tight. Just come back out of uh, retirement. Out of retirement. Hell, no. Hell no. I went and, I went and played soccer last night. Tore my heart. Tore my hammy. Tore your heart. Tore my heart. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> Tore my heart. <laughs> Tore my heart because I can't run, do any training. But um, at least you don't have to do any more preseasons. Man. Yeah, no, that's the one thing I don't miss. Like, nah, I'll tell you the other, one thing I don't miss. Um, getting on the wrestle mats, man, and wrestling. I don't mind the wrestling. I like it. Yeah. You really? I, I can like see. It, yeah. I can. Yeah. Why? Because no one can get you on your back. On your back, hey. No, like uh, at um, Cronulla, we try and put submissions on. What? Yeah, it's hectic. Like we're Fitz is like a fan for jujitsu. Really? Yeah. So does he we, get? Um, in, th th is it true that he gets in on the wrestling mats? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he does. Yeah, he gets in. Um, he tries to show us a couple moves and stuff. Um, yeah, we love it down at Cronulla. Shame we can't put those submissions on, on the footy field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we sometimes we call each other out like Ronnie Did and um Ronnie and Toby. They go back and forth. They try. They have a little wrestle off every now and then. Really? Yeah, I think it's about. Oh, I think it's like three one or three two to Ronnie. Wow. Yeah. He's pretty skinny though. Like he's deceptively strong, but yeah, right. He's uh knows his way around the air. Slippery. Yeah, real slippery. Are you going to go to the Tongan match uh, against Australia? Uh, no, I'm not going. Like, uh, I'll watch it from home with the missus and family. How do you reckon they'll go? I reckon they'll, they'll do good, pretty good. Um, if they can hold the ball and just play or make the most out of every opportunity, if they can get away offloads and disrupt the uh, defensive line, mm. that could go a long way. And from now leading up to pre-season, what do you got going on for yourself? No, I just... Nothing, same old. Um, just train here and there and get the body right, just relax and spend more time with kids, misses and kids. And yeah, that's about it. Nice, brother. Well, thanks again for coming on the show today. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you. I appreciate you really opening up today as well on the podcast and uh, all the best, brother. Yeah. Can't wait to see you rip it up in 2025. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sounds good.